Hey everyone, it's Dave and Olive. Thanks for joining us here at Book Blather. We're here to do our super late April wrap up. We did a book review last week, um, but there was a few other books we read during the month that we uh, wanted to talk about. So uh, better late than never. So we'll jump into it. The first book that we read in the month of April is Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. Now, if you watch this channel already, you know Keelan Patrick Burke is one of my new favorite writers. I discovered him months back uh, reading Blanky, which I thought was a phenomenal book. Uh, I feel like I'm always talking about that book. I'm like in love with that book. Um, I thought it was really great on multiple levels. So then I followed that up at Christmas time with a, she has a short story collection called Dead of Winter, of uh, Christmas themed, uh, winter and Christmas themed short stories. That was also excellent. Uh, has one of the most chilling short stories I've ever read in it. So I bought some more Keelan Patrick Burke books, and this is the the next one that we read. And um, once again, he did not disappoint. Uh, this book, I'll, I'll read you the first, just the first line in the very beginning. Four months to the day he first encountered the boy at Walmart, the last of Phil Pendleton's teeth fell out. So. With the, this book was really cool. What this book was about was um, Phil Pendleton, he's out at Walmart talking to his girlfriend on the phone. And while he's there, he encounters a, a, um, a little boy with his mother and the boy is completely misbehaving, just screaming like a banshee in the middle of the store and everybody's watching. And his mother has just, you know, dead eyes, um, just staring out into space and, you know, then just shoves a bunch of candy in her mouth and uh, nobody really wants to get involved and uh, Phil makes the mistake even though that's not normally him he makes the mistake of just very slightly getting involved and that's the end um, he the boy becomes attached to him and um, basically be, becomes um, his kid for the rest of the story and um, can't really say too much more than that um, I, I thought this um, this book was a, a lot like Blanky in that I, I, it did kind of two parallel types of horror along the way. There was your traditional um, scary stuff, and then there was also like the horror of what happens to Phil Pendleton and his life. Um, and so I thought it was very much like Blanky in that way, and that's part of what I think makes Keelan Patrick Burke such a good writer is he does multiple things with the story. He also had some scenes, you know, it's just short, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say much about it, but th he has some scenes where, where you see what the boy is connected with that were like super creepy. Like I felt like I was watching one of those scenes in a movie where you get like the shivers when you watch it. Um, it was the, the imagery he, he created with those just suddenly created in those instances was, was pretty, was pretty chilling. So, um, yeah, loved this story, just like the other couple, and I would definitely recommend reading this one. What? What? Do we have sour candy? Yeah, we have sour candy. What? You want to see it? It's right here. Sour Patch Kids. You want to try it? Uh, I don't think you would like the sour candy. All right, I mean, you could try it, I guess. Didn't even open these yet. I mean, I really don't think you're gonna like these. I mean, you could try one, because they're not that good for you, but. I really don't think you're gonna like it. You sure you wanna try it? What? All right. What do you think? You like those? Okay, so the next book that we read was The Tent also by Keelan Patrick Burke. Now I've heard 
um, people talking about some of the other books like Blanky and it looks like some people are talking about uh, Sour Candy now, but I haven't actually heard anybody talking about The Tent. And I actually liked The Tent even better than Sour Candy. Um, this was another short one, but this was really cool story. Uh, this one was about, um, there's this, uh, you know, a, a trail and up in the mountains and for, you know, hikers and, um, and, and um, nature explorers and things. And uh, you're, as long as you stay on the normal paths, nothing bad will happen to you. But of course, the people on this in this uh, story don't. And so you meet a few different characters, um, but it's, most of it is centered around um, a husband and wife um, that are, uh, that, you know, have some issues and their son, and they're going out uh, on a camping trip, but of course get lost. And so um, there, there was some, some really cool things that happened here. And, um, and, and again, like with Keelan Patrick Burke's other stuff, there was a couple different things that was that were going on. So I always try to look for, you know, symbolism and whether there's something else behind these stories as I'm reading them. Um, in particular, especially try to do that with Keelan, Keelan Patrick Burke now, um, because I, I know that he does that. So in, in this one, I'm not sure if I'm reading too much into it, but um, you know, when. When, when you go through this story, of course, there, there's the scary parts, but then you're also learning about the, the characters and a couple different characters. And I, I may have been reading a little too much into it. I'm not sure, but I felt like um, he may have been presenting a parasitic allegory. And that, that's that's all I'll say. Um, I don't want to say anything else because I don't, I don't want to spoil it. So, um, but this, this was really, this was really cool. I was disappointed it was, it was over so quick because I really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, and the next book we read is um, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Uh, this, I had read uh, months back, I had read A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, and I loved it. I, th I thought it was, uh, it, was, it was a really good story. It was kind of addictive, a little mystery. Um, and he also did like some really cool things with perspective and so I really thought that was a phenomenal book so I definitely wanted to try more of his stuff and uh, so I tried this one um, this was good um, this wasn't quite as good as a head full of ghosts but this was really good um, what this was about was um, there are the there's this um, uh, th this this couple um, Eric and Andrew um, that are uh, sort of vacationing up in a cabin in the middle of nowhere with their adopted daughter. And she, in the right the beginning, the daughter is playing out in the lawn in the front, and a stranger, um, come, a very pleasant stranger, Leonard, comes along and starts to play with her and talk to her. And um, he tells her that, um, she's about to go back inside, and he tells her that um, the dads need to talk to them and let them in, um, and that her dads are not gonna wanna do that, but they need to do that. Um, to help them save the world. And so, sure enough, there's a, a, a uh, Leonard is followed by a, a group of people, and um, they, you know, um, the daughter, Wen, goes inside, and this group of people um, tries to get access to the cabin, and so then it goes from there. And it's, it's, it's a real thrill ride, it's very addictive, you definitely want to keep going. Um, I so I was talking to another booktuber, uh, Geo or Cody and Snaps, a little bit about this book before I read it, and he had said he didn't discourage me from reading it, but he had said he just really didn't like the ending, and um, that was exactly my take. Um, I did enjoy the book. I'm happy I read it, but I was I real basically the whole not just the ending, like the whole last quarter of the book, it, what happened there, and I was. I, I didn't like it, um, and I was surprised by it, um, which I guess is a good thing, um, but I, I didn't know why it ended that way. I have to say, though, it is one of those books that I, I, I appreciate a little bit more as time went on after I finished it, and I thought about it a little bit more. Um, you know, it was a nice thrill ride. There was a message behind it, and, um, and the more I thought about it, I was thinking that maybe Paul Tremblay chose this way to wrap up the story maybe kind of that uh, maybe that was kind of the point of, of sort of the um the ramifications um, um if you will and and 
that, that's really all. I don't want to say too much more because I don't want to spoil it. But um, uh, definitely worth a read. I would recommend reading it. Um, it is just, I, I would imagine, I haven't looked at this, but I would imagine a lot of people probably, there's probably a lot of um, different views about how, this, how the book ended. But um, you should read it, see for yourself. So, Okay, and we read one more book in the month of April, which is uh, The Ledger and the Chain, How Domestic Slave Traders Shaped America by Joshua D. Rothman. Um, Joshua D. Rothman is a history professor at the University of Alabama, and um, I already did a review on this, so I uh, will, I'm going to try to link that in the cards. It should be linked there, assuming I figure out how to do that, because I haven't done it before. Um, so you can go watch that video if you like. Uh, this is about the um, domestic slave trade um, in the first half of the 19th century before the Civil War, and it followed as a discussion of some very um, um, significant uh, or very um, influential businessmen that ran and built that trade um, for during those decades. Um, a very important book and um, I encourage you to both to, to watch the video that we already did on it and to read this book. So that's all I'll say about it because you can go watch the other video if you, if you want to learn more. Okay so that's everything. Uh, that's everything we read in April. Um, we'll be following up with a couple of videos soon. Soon we're going to be doing the um, a video for the read every issue challenge and we'll also be doing another book review soon um, so stay tuned for those um, remember if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get a notification every time Olive says it's okay for us to upload another video so thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time